Hello friends, I don't know what your yards look like right now, but ours in Kentucky has all of these lovely leaves in it. Um, fall has definitely passed through here. Our ginkgo, which is my favorite tree, sheds all of its beautiful, brilliant yellow leaves in a day. They all drop to the ground and then cover our yard with this blanket of leaves. And it's just such a fun aspect of creation that my kids enjoy. And the thing is, we were originally in the Garden of Eden meant to enjoy creation to its fullest capacity but now because sin entered the world it still impacts creation to this day there are groans or birth pangs as the Bible calls it with creation um, natural disasters that occur that are not supposed to it's not supposed to be that way it's not supposed to hurt humans or fight back okay but today in Advent day three we're gonna be studying the fall of of Adam and Eve and how it happened and why and how this impacts our faith in Jesus because here's the deal if we don't believe in the fall if we don't understand this then we don't know why we need to be saved or what we even need to be saved from we have to have an understanding of sin and where sin came from and that it is a very real thing that impacts not only human beings but creation everything around us so if you will open your Bibles to Genesis, I want us to look at the story of creation in its original context and see just exactly how that crafty serpent tempted Adam and Eve towards the fall. So if you go to Genesis chapter three, in my Bible, it's titled The Fall of Man. Right before that, in Genesis two, God had created Adam and Eve, and it describes the garden there and just how beautiful this place is. It said, now the Lord, this is uh, chapter two, verse eight. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east and in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed. And the Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. I love that idea of trees that were pleasing to the eye. I know that we only get leaves turning colors in fall, but I just like to imagine for a moment that maybe in Eden, maybe this brief glimpse we see of all the, the leaves changing into their brilliant colors is a little glimpse of Eden because if they're pleasing to the eye, now trees are pleasing when they have green leaves too, can you imagine a forest of the most beautiful multicolored leaves you've ever seen? I mean, it's why we think the fall is breathtaking. I like to think that's a little glimpse of Eden and I enjoy my kids playing in it too behind me. So it says they were pleasing to the eye, they were good for food. And in the middle of this garden, he planted um, the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now he said of all the things there, he set out one rule and that was to avoid these two trees, <laughs> to not eat from them. And the thing is, you know, people are like, well, why did he put them there in the first place? If he knew that we were going to mess up and sin and fall, why, why put that there to tempt us? Well, because the thing is, if you're never tempted, you never have a chance to exercise your choice. And true love, true devotion, true obedience, um, all of those things, they come about through choice. If you're forced into something, that's not true love. If you are never given an option to stray, then how do you know you're truly committed to something? So those are all of the options there. He puts those there, he asks them not to eat of it. And then we go to chapter three, the fall of man. It says, now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say, you must not eat from any tree in the garden? Okay, this is the age old schemes of Satan. They, <laughs> they don't change. He did not take her hand and force her to pick up the fruit. Um, we, we think of sin as such this direct thing. All he had to do was twist the truth of God. There is some truth in his statement, right? Uh, that you should not eat from something. But he said, was it true? Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? 
No, God didn't say that. He gave them two specific trees and then opened up the whole of the garden, the whole of creation to them. But all Satan had to do was focus her eyes in on the one thing that they could not have and twist God's truth. So there she is. She's already in the trap of questioning, did God really say this? And then it goes on. Uh, so she responds, the woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you will die. So she's kind of remembering a little unclear, uh, but it goes on and the serpent says, you will not surely die. The serpent said to the woman, for God knows when you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God knowing good and evil. Again, she gave Satan an opportunity to twist the words. And once he twists words in our heads, he knows he has us. That is why in the New Testament, when Jesus is taken into the desert to be tempted by the devil, the one thing he does is he quotes scripture at Satan. He doesn't let Satan twist those words over and over again. When tempted, his defense is God's word. And it's why it's so important that every day we go back to the actual scriptures and we read them and we know them and we commit them to our hearts because that is where the truth is found. So today, I'm going to leave us with this concept that we must fill our heads and our hearts with God's word. It's truly the only way we can stand in defense of the devil's schemes and help us just to avoid temptation and sin and to know what God wants for our lives. I'm going to close this today with what's on our card here. It says, for a while, Adam and Eve, the first humans, lived in peace with God in a garden called Eden. But one bite of a fruit forbidden by God to eat changed everything. A crafty serpent convinced Eve to take a bite of this forbidden fruit, and she encouraged Adam to do the same. Now sin separated them and everyone after them from God. Romans 5.12 tells us, sin entered the world because one man sinned and death came because of sin everyone sinned so death came to all people god created us to be with him so he set a plan in motion to set things right thank god that even though everyone sins and makes mistakes he still loves you and made a way to be with you forever so if you think about it our inheritance our fleshly inheritance came from adam and eve we are of their line of sin generationally but jesus came to change our inheritance, to give us an inheritance into God's kingdom. He has changed our lineage forever. All we have to do is accept that gift and our sins are forgiven because of what he did on the cross. So thank you guys for watching today. Um, I'm Morgan on Life in Lilacs and I'm going to encourage you to just meditate on Romans 5:12 and how we have freedom in Jesus. See you next time.